the New York Giants, who are 1-3-1 and one in their last five games, get back on track in a critical matchup with the Washington Commanders this weekend? We're going to talk about that and then some on this edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, coming your way next. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the games start. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to a new edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Trena. So happy to have you with us on this Wednesday. It is hump day. December 14th, New York Giants about to get started for the week, preparing for a big, big, big NFC East matchup Sunday night in Washington against the Washington Commanders. The winner of that game gets, if it's the Giants, will get a tiebreaker over Washington. If Washington wins it, the Giants playoff hopes take a significant dent. And um, in today's show, we're going to talk about um, can the Giants, we're going to ask, try to answer the question, can the Giants get back on track? What are some of the problems that they've had thus far, especially in the last five games, some of the solutions? And then I want to close out the show by talking about why playoffs would matter for this Giants team, even if they go one and done. So that's the agenda for today's show. Again, happy to have you with us. Let's jump right into the program. Uh, let's recap how the Giants got to where they are right now. The New York Giants, 7-5-1, uh, and one, not a horrible record, uh, still a decent enough record, but uh, certainly a lot more that needs to be done uh, before they can punch their ticket into the postseason. So with that said, let's talk about um, some of the problems the Giants have had and kind of what they've tried to do to mitigate some of these issues. The biggest problem, and you can go back to the start of the season with this, is that the Giants roster was not a complete roster. We all know about how general manager Joe Shane inherited a horrible salary gap situation that hamstrung him. So corners had to be cut, positions had to be sacrificed, and oh, by the way, they had to rely on young players, rookies, undrafted free agents to fill some critical spots that would eventually pop up for this team down the line. Now, the problem with that is that some of the roles that these younger players have been asked to fill because, you know, the veterans in front of them are either injured or, you know, out for the season or whatever. So part of the problem has been the lack of experience. And for example, let's look at special teams. Special teams, you know, the more I think about the problems that this team has had on specials, all year long, basically, the more I think it has to do with the lack of experience. Now, you've got guys that, you know, are being pressed into action on special teams that maybe didn't do it in college. So they have no idea, you know, about lane discipline and, and integrity. Um, maybe they just figure, okay, special teams, you just run down the field, you make a tackle and call it a day. You know, I remember having a conversation with Adore Jackson about special teams and how it's taught in college. And it's not really, you know, in most places, it's not really taught as, as detailed as it is in the NFL. So a lot of players coming up who get to the NFL level, it's like a, a, a total re-education of sorts on how to play special teams because there's little details that go into playing special teams. So I'm just using that as an example. You've got players who are being pressed into duty that maybe they're not ready for. That's probably the biggest problem outside of the injuries, which are which is creating this whole need to press players into uh, early duty, if you will, before they're ready. So, you know, the roster, like I said, the salary cap situation, not the greatest to start the year. Joe Shane is trying to get through the rest of the year with about 2.8 million worth of cap space that remains. 
and there's only so much you can do, all right? So any guys that may be around on the street that maybe Giant fans have called for, you know, like Odell Beckham Jr. or Will Fuller or whoever, you can't afford them. It's kind of where, where things are at right now. So the Giants have to make do with what, they're, with what they have. And the message from head coach Brian Dable to get the team back on track is to just keep chopping wood, as they say, you know, keep working, keep doing what they've been doing all along. Now, the drawback to that is, is you can argue that what they've been doing the last five weeks hasn't worked because they haven't won. That, to me, says that the injuries are just catching up with them. It was a matter of time before it would happen. But, you know, when you have injuries, and this is why I hate it when coaches say next man up, because the next man up is not the same as the guys that you necessarily lost. So that's why I just I just cringe when coaches say that. I understand that's, you know, all they can say, but, you know, who are they fooling, really? So anyway, you've got situations where guys are coming up and they're stepping into the starting lineup or into key um, uh roles, if you will, large roles as subs, you know, in sub packages, and they're just not ready or the chemistry is not there. And let's use the offensive line as a good example. All right. The offensive line has had what about four or five different left guards. So I did a, um, or I'm writing, I should say, it's not out yet. I don't think it might be out by the time you see this podcast, depending on when you, you watch it. But I did an article uh, for Giants Country on Saquon Barkley and where he has had, you know, the most success with his running and pretty interesting, I think. Um, what I what I did was I studied the holes that he has hit when running behind that offensive line. Um, for those of you not familiar with the holes, um, when the article on Giants Country comes out, I have a link to an article that explains it, but um, each gap, if you will, represents a hole. So, you know, you have the gap between the guard and the, uh, excuse me, the center and the right guard, the center and the left guard, the left guard and the left tackle, the left tackle and the edge, uh, and so on and so forth. And it, and it just varies across the line. So I looked up Saquon Barkley's um, run production, where he's been picking up the most yards through what hole. And what I found, according to uh, sports radar data, that is, is that Barkley has picked up the most yards between the sixth, eighth, seventh, and fourth holes. All right. So the sixth hole is outside the right tackle, where usually the tight end is. The eighth hole would be the right edge, you know, so just running all the way to the edge and then turning up. Seventh hole would be the left edge and the fourth hole which is between the right guard and right tackle, where Barkley has not picked up a lot of yards, not surprisingly here, include the second hole, the third hole, and the first hole, all right? So the second hole is that center right guard hole. Um, the left, the uh, third hole is the left tackle left guard, where I mentioned, again, they had about four different, four or five different left guards this year, and then the first hole is the center left guard uh, gap. So just kind of, you know, that statistic, I thought, um, exemplified how the chemistry can kind of get messed up because especially with the offensive line, you want that nonverbal communication to exist. And when you start moving guys in and out of the lineup because of injury or performance or whatever the case may be, you lose that chemistry, you lose that communication. So there is a reason why teams want to see the same five offensive linemen playing week after week after week. The Giants haven't had that luxury. I don't know how many um, offensive line combinations they've had because of injuries, but it's been, you know, I want to say at least, let's see, one, two, you know, four different left guards. They, you know, Feliciano was out, so that would be five. Evan Neal's been out, that would be six. So they've had at least six different combinations this year at, at different points. Not good for the running game, okay? So that's been a problem, all right? And then you could also look at the coverage issues. You know, the defensive backs, 
Right now, the Giants are playing with three quarters of their starting defensive backfield missing. Aaron Robinson is on season ending IR. Adoree Jackson has been out of the lineup for the last several weeks. Xavier McKinney has been out of the lineup since returning from the bye. Right, Jolene Julian Love is surviving. So now when you start losing guys uh, in the secondary and you have to replace them with, you know, uh, guys who maybe aren't as experienced at the NFL level, now that kind of limits what you can do as far as maybe bringing safeties up to stop the run or, you know, for run support. You know, you talk about Adoree Jackson missing. Adoree Jackson was pretty good at run support too, in addition to, you know, usually drawing the teams, the opponents, opposing teams, number one receiver. So these are all things that I think we can agree are at the root of the problems the Giants have had. And then, you know, obviously there's execution. You know, you can make a case for some some of the conservative game calling, game uh, the game planning and so forth. Um, you know, people have said what happened to the creativity that the offense showed earlier in the year. For example, the Wildcat. For example, um, you know, the, the pre-snap motion. When you have new personnel, you have to plug in there on the fly. That limits you as to how detailed and how in-depth you can get. So those are some of the problems. Now, what are some of the solutions that the Giants can look at moving forward? I'm going to tell you in a moment. Hey, small business owners, if you're looking for the right people to help your small business fire on all cylinders, you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. Post a free job listing in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to let everybody know that you're hiring. Over 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn Jobs every week and are just waiting to find opportunities with employers like yours. With LinkedIn Jobs, simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize whom you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash NFL. That's linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode of the Locked On Giants podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. That's why you'll be able to find Think Like a Champion, a brand new podcast from Russell Wilson and Audible, available right now as a bonus episode on the Locked On Presents podcast. Wilson, along with co-hosts Harry Wilson and the late Trevor Mowad, Look at how high-performance athletes, artists, and leaders push the boundaries of their potential. Head on over to Lock On Presents right now for a sneak peek of Think Like a Champion or catch the full series available anywhere you get your podcasts. Audible, get in the game. All right, Giant fans, you've got Patricia Trainer here on the Lock On Giants podcast. We are trying to answer the question, can the New York Giants get back on track? They are one, three, and one in their last five games. They have a must win on Sunday against the Washington Commanders. All the games are really must win games. But uh, look, Sunday's game is about as big of a must win as can be. I mean, we're talking a playoff variety type of, of uh, atmosphere, which is expected for Sunday. And you know, in- interestingly, the winner of that probably is going to go to the playoffs, barring a complete, you know, collapse. So I mentioned some of the problems, some of the challenges that the Giants had in, um, earlier in the show. Let's talk about some of the solutions. And I want to start off by telling you a story. Now, you guys probably know if you've watched me or read me uh, a number of years, you know, I've been on this beat for over 30 seasons now. So I was around back in 2011 the last time the Giants went to the Super Bowl. And that was an interesting year. So let me just take you back to 2011 for a moment here and where things kind of stood around this time, that that particular season. The Giants had um, just come off of a, uh, a tough loss to, I believe it was the Washington Commanders. Yeah, it was the Washington Commanders. Um, they had lost to them in uh, week 15. It was a 23-10 loss. 
And with two games left, the Giants were at seven and seven, their playoff hopes dwindling. So what happened? Well, I remember being in the post-game locker room, you know, doing, making my rounds, um, getting involved with the, you know, the different huddles that usually form, form in the post-game. And a safety by the name of Antrell Roll, who's a defensive co-captain, basically stole the show. And Antrell um, had a very simple message that was very powerful and that his teammates took to heart. He basically stood up and he said, I need for these guys, for all these guys to dig deep inside of themselves and give more. And he meant, you know, whether it be more film study, whether it meant lifting extra weights, whether it meant staying an extra hour after, you know, the day was done, give more for the cause. Don't just, you know, throw your hands up and say, ah, we're seven and seven. We've got no chance to win or to do anything. Well, the following week on uh, Christmas Eve, the Giants were at the Jets, all right? And that was a must-win game. Basically, the last two games were must-win games for the Giants. And the Giants on Christmas Eve, and I remember that game, not just because of the spread they put out, which was a surf and turf, as I remember, but that was the Victor Cruz game. I don't know if you guys remember that, but Victor Cruz had a big play in that game. But anyway... The Giants beat the Jets 29-14. Guess what? Now they're eight and seven. All right. They have one game left to go. That one game on New Year's Day against the Dallas Cowboys at home. What do they do? The Giants were, they weren't favored for that game, but they came out and they beat Dallas 31-14. Finished with a nine and seven record made it into the postseason. So that rally cry by it, by uh, Antrell Roll helped to wake the sleeping giants, if you will. And we all know the rest of the story, folks. The Giants destroyed the Atlanta Falcons in the wild card. They beat the Green Bay Packers in the division finals uh, by two scores. They just beat the 49ers uh, by a field goal. And they beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. So that was the last time the Giants were in the Super Bowl. Now, why am I telling you that story? Because Dexter Lawrence, in his conference call or video call with the media on Monday, basically was asked, you know, what can the 10 captains of this team do to help, you know, motivate the players going forward? And Dexter, you know, just answering the question like he always does, basically said the same thing Antrell Roll told his teammates. Everybody has to reach in, dig deep, and just do extra to be ready. You know, don't leave anything for granted. Don't leave any stone unturned. Come to work and be prepared to work. Don't just think, okay, you know, it's 4.30. We can go home now and, and you know, hang out with friends or whatever. Be prepared to spend an extra hour, do a little extra work after practice, watch a little extra film, get with the coaches, do what it takes, because this is a, basically it's a do or die game on Sunday for the Giants. And that was what Dexter said as a team captain, he would urge his teammates to do. Now, will they listen? That's another story. Obviously, you know, sometimes guys can say stuff and Guys will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes in one ear, comes out the other. But if the Giants really want to punch their ticket and get into the postseason, they cannot leave anything for granted here. You know, Brian Dable said, you know, look, we're going to come in. We're going to get back to work. And some critics might say, look, they've been going to work every week. And the last five weeks, it hasn't been working. And it's true. It hasn't. Just look at the record. Like I said, one, three, and one. But you can increase what you do. You can change what you do. And that's what the Giants need to look at. Because, look, there's no cavalry coming in on a white horse as far as roster reinforcements. They might get some guys back from the injured list. 
but you know, they're not going to get, you know, the answers to, to some of their greatest roster deficiencies coming in, you know, on, on the Meadowlands wins uh, to save the team. So it's all about how they approach the week. Do they go about it like usual? Do they put the extra time in? What choice do they make? That choice, ladies and gentlemen, is going to go a long way to determining just how ready this team is to play Washington and what kind of success they have on Sunday in what is an absolute critical, no questions asked, must win game for the New York Giants. All right. Now, people say, well, even if the Giants get into the playoffs, they'll probably won't be one and done. So what's the point? I'm going to tell you what the point is coming up. Bet Online is your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game, both for the college bowl season and the NFL. And Bet Online doesn't stop there. It's your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events including NBA, NHL, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to Bet Online today to use or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the games start. Giant fans, you got Patricia Trina here on the Locked On Giants podcast. And we've just got through talking about can the Giants get back on track after going one, three, and one their last five games. The Giants haven't won a game since I think week 14 against the uh, Houston Texans. It's been over a month. They are due. And of course, they've got a Sunday night game. And you know how I feel about Sunday night games um, personally. But also the Giants historically just don't do well on Sunday night. I think they, they've they only won something like, I want to say 18 games. I think they're like 18, 31 and, and two, if I'm not mistaken, on Sunday nights, something like that. But uh, it's not a very good record. So... Anyway, what I want to talk about now is the cons- the whole idea of the playoffs. And, you know, I think we can all agree that the Giants roster as constructed right now is not a Super Bowl team. You know, I think the game against the Eagles proved that. And I'm not knocking that per se. I mean, understand and I understand that this is year one of the rebuild for Joe Shane, Brian Dable and company. The Eagles, meanwhile, have had about three, three and a half years or so to build up their um, their roster through, you know, smart drafting, free agent acquisitions, trades, and so forth. The Giants will get there, folks. I think I believe in Shane. I believe in Dable and this system. They will get there. They're not there yet. So people, there are some people who say, well, even if the Giants get to the playoffs, Chances are they're not going to go far. There's a good chance they're going to be a one and done team because they have shown, at least down the stretch here, that when they face playoff caliber teams, they can't hold they can't hold a, uh, a candle to them. So what's the point? Why even root for the playoffs if they're not going to go far? I'm going to tell you why because I think that there are benefits to be had here. Number one. It's a learning experience. This whole year for the Giants has been all about learning, learning new systems on offense and defense, learning new coaching staff ways of doing things, learning how this new regime wants things, learning a new culture. Everything is brand new, all right? The playoff experience for a lot of these guys at the NFL level would be brand new. So it's valuable experience to get into the postseason to kind of go through a week to to experience the intense, you know, the higher intensity and so forth, which, you know, no disrespect to the college level, but at the NFL, NFL level playoffs, I mean, there's just no environment like it. So it's good learning experience to see, okay, how do we have to prepare? You know, how are things going to work? Um, because now you're in basically a sudden death. It's do or die. If you win, you go on. If you lose, you go home. So it's a series, whereas I think mainly in college, um, once teams get to the bowls, 
It's like winner or loser. So that said, there's other benefits to the Giants making the playoffs, such as you don't think that's not going to help with recruiting a free agents next year. A lot of free agents always say, I want to go to a team that has a chance to win. Well, if the Giants show that they can get into the playoffs, even if they're one and done, it shows a potential free agent that the team is on the right track. And the recruiting uh, pitch, if you will, becomes a little easier. It's like, look, we made the playoffs last year. We didn't advance. We need you. We feel your talents can put us over the edge. So that combined with a healthier cap situation could make for an easier time with recruiting. And do I have to talk about the fan base and what making the playoffs would do for a fan base that has suffered for most of the last decade watching year after year after year of lousy football? We are talking now at this point, a rejuvenated fan base, a fan base that is excited, you know, a fan base that's always been loyal, but let's face it. A lot of people, you know, when, when the Giants would roll around to, you know, October and they'd be out of things because their record would be so bad. Let's be honest. How many of us out there tuned them out, did other things on a Sunday, decided to, you know, take up other interests or, or just, you know, said, hey, I'm not investing any of my hard-earned money in this team anymore. So basically what the Giants have done through winning what they have done or what they will do if they make the playoffs is it gives everybody a few hours out of the week to not have to worry about life, to not have to worry about anything because it's all about giant football the way it should be. So there are multiple benefits to the Giants making the playoffs. Again, even if they go one and done, and you never know. You think back to that 2011 team and, and uh, realistically, how many people thought that that team was going to go all the way to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl? Probably not a lot. The same could probably be said of the 2017, which went nine and seven, by the way. Probably not a lot of people thought that that team was going to go very far. Then you had the 2018, which everybody thought would be a juggernaut until, you know, the, the wagon wheels fell off. So you never know from week to week. That is why you line up. You play the game, you hope for the best, you trust in your process, you trust in the work you put in, and you just see where the chips fall. Where will the chips fall on Sunday? We will find out soon enough. Coming up on the Locked on Giants podcast tomorrow, David Harrison of Locked on Commanders will join me. Then on Thursday night, it is Locked on Giants Live, Trina, Tana, and Dog. And trust me, folks, we got a lot to talk about. So you will want to join us and uh, bring your questions. And if you've been to a Locked on Giants Live, you know how much fun we have. If you have not been to a Locked on Giants Live session over on YouTube, check us out. Even if you check us out for a few minutes, we usually go a, a couple of hours, but just come by, check us out. I think you will, you'll have fun between talking, you know, communicating with us as well as your fellow fans in the chat room. So hope to see you then. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Locked on Giants podcast, making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today from the leading stories, to, you know, the, the scores, everything you need to know. Get local expert insights on everything. Only available on the Locked on Sports today podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow for Crossover Thursday here on the Locked on Giants podcast.